So, so Heath, just you've been coming along to the church here for a couple About four of months. Now. Four months now. Okay. So, how how are you connected? How come you're up in 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 Blackpool? Well, my wonderful mother, that there at the back, uh, lives here in Blackpool. I'll give her a round of applause. Go on, give give Kath a round of applause. Um, and my awesome son is, is here this morning as well. But... Well, you've got to give him a round of applause now, haven't you? So... Okay. And my brother is just... No, no he's not. Um, so, with my mum being here in Blackpool, that's how I come to visit here. Um, all this was the place I always visited as a kid, it's all where we came for holidays. You know, kind of my generation, it's like you went to one place. Remember those days? It's Blackpool, yeah? Skegness. He always went the same place, so Blackpool was the place he came to, so that's why I'm here in Blackpool. Brilliant. Well, it's lovely that you're here. And we've got, we're both like sport, don't we? We do. So uh, just tell us about, perhaps, say, your, your favourite sport and, and why. Gosh. Uh, whew, I think I've played all the major commercial sports. Um, football has to be uh, my favourite, so I've played it from being that high and from my background with not a great deal of money. It was cheap, yeah, so uh, I've probably played more football than anything, but I played a lot of basketball, played cricket um, as well at uh, fairly high standard when I, was, when I was younger. Brilliant, okay. So, uh, for those who don't know, I'm into bowling currently, so, but... Um... He's, he's, he's really good as well. <laughs> so, no, you didn't have to say that, Heath, yes, but... Um, so, we, I suppose we have to just ask, who's, what football team do you support? Well, there's only one football team worth supporting. Whoa, whoa, this isn't going well, is it? Staley Bridge Celtic. <laughs> Has anybody actually heard of it? Anybody Staley heard of Staley Bridge Celtic? Celtic. Yay! Okay. <laughs> yeah. Two people. No, I'm a Man U fan uh, for my sins. Yeah, always have been, still am. I support the Red Devils. Right. And I'm a Christian. Cool. So, well, <laughs> okay. moving, on, moving on from that, okay, we don't want to dwell on that. Um, so. It's, good, it's a good idea at the moment. Not you at you all. just mentioned there that you support the Red, Red Devils, but you're a Christian. Okay, so uh, this is this is like a loose segue into it. Okay, so how how did you, <laughs> how and why did you become a Christian, and what sort of what was involved in that process? Um, gosh, it's and um, when? it's about it's a long time ago. Um, it's 35 years now. Um, so I was 18, 17 when I became a Christian. And um, I grew up in Manchester, and um, so yeah, I support Manchester United, and I live in Manchester, N not anywhere else in the country. Um, and um, I would say I was a very, very, and my mum will back me up here, I was a very, very good child. <laughs> okay, I was, a, it's like nobody, you don't, you don't know, I really, honestly, I was, I'm a Christian, I can't lie. Uh, and no, I think I was the opposite. Um, I definitely caused my parents uh, a lot of um, a lot of stress, and I was a rebel without a cause, um, pretty much. Lots of energy. So I, I always kind of tell my stories. It was like two halves. I had my sporting half of my life, which I was a decent lad because I wanted to play sports, so I wouldn't do anything to to mess that up. But then the other half of my life, I had a lot of energy, and I gave that into very skillful activities that help me acquire goods. Can anybody work out what that might be? Yeah, okay, rhymes with my name, Heath. Yeah, so in essence, I was a thief, um, and I would like to help myself to things and to break into people's properties, and um, I can't say I was very good at it because it landed me in prison. Not once, not twice, but three times by the age of 17. So you think you'd learn, wouldn't you? You keep getting caught. And that was the only times I went to prison, you know? I went through the whole system, um, attendance center, community service, you, you name it. Um, and I didn't learn. Um, but it was the final, just final time I was in prison that I just thought, my life is just out of control. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up 18. And I know that I'm just going to be back in prison. Why wouldn't I be? This was, this was my life. Um, and so um, I just started to seek. I started to pray. And um, I will mention this. All well, my mum's here, but um, I know that I brought a lot of pressure to my parents. And a lot of my mum's illnesses back then I, were down to me. Okay, the pressure that I brought to the home. 
Um, I'll keep that short. But for the first time in my life, I felt guilty about causing other people problems. For the first time, I'm nearly 18 years of age. And I just started to pray. I used to just pray for my mum. And then long story short now, um, I got incidents just started to happen. So can you keep mic closed? Yeah, sorry. Um, people just popped into my prison cell um, like a chaplain and just had a quick word with me and just said the right thing, just prayed with me. Now, nobody ever preached the gospel to me. Nobody ever told me that God loved me, ever, till the night that I became a Christian. The first time I heard it. Um, but the, so there's just these little seeds going on. And um, so I'll come to the, the night I became a Christian now. Uh, it's about a six month period. And four ex-offenders came into the prison, told their story. And it's, it was just like four quarters of my life. I was, I was the only person in the room. God was there for me on that night. He was there for others, but I knew he was there for me. And um, I just knew straight I just knew that Jesus died for me, for my sin, and that he could transform my life. And I was convinced of it. Yeah, I, I don't know how. I just convinced. I mean, everybody in the system had tried to, to help me change my ways, and nothing had worked. So I just couldn't wait to get back to my cell that night. Um, but those of us who are Christians know that we also have an enemy of our souls who likes to try and disturb things. And so on my way back to my cell, all I, could, I had this other thought saying, you can't become a Christian in prison. You'll get beaten up, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I was believing this. And literally I stood outside my cell, waiting to go in, and this young man came up to me. I hadn't spoken to, me before, spoken to him before. He'd been in the prison three days. He asked me about the class. He asked me if I was a Christian, and he ignored the question. Chatted a bit more, he asked me again, and I had to say no with gritted teeth. And he just looked at me, it was as if God himself was looking at me, and he just said, I am, and just walked away. And literally the peace of God fell right through my whole being. And I went into my cell that night, it was a posh prison, it had a separate cubicle for a toilet, and we used to clean it every day. I waited till my cellmate went to, um, to sleep, went in there, got down over the potty. Uh, it was, I say, it was really clean. And uh, I prayed the simplest of prayer. I just said, God, forgive me for all that I've done. Come and change my life. And I had the most powerful experience that I've ever had in the whole of my life. And I felt from my toes to my head, it was just as if God was just wiping the sin from me and cleansing me. Um, I felt absolutely new. The Bible, when it says you're a new creation, my gosh, I felt absolutely new. Um, and I knew that my life was going to be different forever. And the, the third thing was, I felt I heard God said, I'm going to heaven. So that's my Wonderful. story. Wonderful. Fantastic testimony. And uh, so that was that night. What... What changed? What what was different? Like moving moving on in the, in the immediate sort of the next few weeks. I had a, a deep desire to read the Bible. Um, I didn't get beaten up in prison. It was completely the opposite, actually. People just kept asking me what's changed because I changed, literally, o o overnight. Um, obviously, not everything. Um, I'm, I'm perfect now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that, Mum, it's all right. perfect now. <laughs> no, not yet. I'll keep trying. Um, but people noticed the difference, even in that short space of time um, that I had left before I was released. Um, and um, I just had no desire to do the crimes that I was committing. And I was hooked on them, because the adrenaline rush from some of the stuff we used to do is quite addictive, yeah? That was the main reason I used to do it. I didn't actually do it for the money, that was nice. But the rush of doing some of these things, getting chased with the police, was, um, yeah, was, was something else, but I had no desire to do that. I just wanted to be a normal human being, as I kind of felt at the time, and uh, loved my mum and dad, um, maybe as I hadn't done as a kid. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I wanted to be a decent chap at that time, so I thought about it. And then moving forward, just um, very briefly, what happened then, you know, obviously you, you you came out of prison at some point because you're, you're saying that. They dared, they dared and, to uh, release me. Yeah, and so what happened then? Sort of just moving, moving forward. What did you do? 
Um, gosh, it's funny, isn't it? Because when God's on your case and it becomes real, it's almost like there's loads of little things that, that, that happen. But in short, I joined a, a church in my hometown. Um, was there for, for 10 years, ended up in full-time youth and children's work there. Um, then went on to, to Bible college, got, got trained uh, there. And um, yeah, that was my for the first 10 years. And it all went downhill after that. <laughs> 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 that brilliant. Uh, we want to hear more, don't we? Uh, but, um, and there'll be plenty of time. Ask Heath about his more of his story and some of the other stuff that he's done. You, go, you know, as we go for a, a picnic or chatting afterwards or on Sundays and stuff, you know, but that's brilliant. Thank you so much. It's so good to hear what God can do, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing.